Terminator Zero just released on Judgment Day, and like many others, I was really looking forward to it. This feels like a fresh start, a clean slate to introduce a new story, new characters, and a new location. We've never seen what happened in other countries during Judgment Day, so it's exciting to see what's going on in other parts of the world. I'm also eager to see the franchise return to its R-rated horror roots, which have been missing since Terminator 1 and 2. But the big question is, can it bring back the hope fans have lost in this franchise? I enjoyed it, despite its flaws. It doesn't reach the level of Terminator 1 or 2, but it absolutely wipes the floor with Genesis and Dark Fate. Honestly, I don't think it was possible for the show to be worse than those, even if Netflix tried their hardest. Terminator Zero has a lot going for it. The action is excellent across the board. It swings between the slasher-style violence of the original Terminator and the high-octane action of Terminator 2. It's not derivative, and the anime style shines through. The shift in cultural context isn't as significant as it could have been since the heroes don't have much trouble finding guns in Japan, but it does lead to a few unexpected cool moments. A lot of the show follows the helpless kids and Misaki, while Aiko almost destroys herself, trying to stop the Terminator. The fights are grimy, intense, and rarely feel balanced. The Terminator is a serious threat, and most of the human characters can barely survive an encounter with him. The show constantly introduces new elements that keep every action scene feeling fresh. The animation was nice, and the show kept me hooked, even though some characters seem to have too much plot armor when facing the Terminator. It's not on the same level as Cyberpunk Edge Runners or Arcane, but it's still good. At times, the show is brilliant. It introduces a lot of new ideas that poke fun at and explain the messy timeline of the movie franchise. The idea that time travel isn't really a thing is interesting, but the biggest problem with the show is that it doesn't really feel like it's about the Terminator, or even Skynet, not in the way you'd expect. It reminds me a lot of the comic Hunters and Killers, where two AIs, Skynet and a rival, have an uneasy alliance that could turn into an AI versus AI war. The show touches on this idea, but never fully explores it. There are a lot of cool ideas that get brought up, but don't fully play out. Like how the different location impacts how they fight the Terminator, and how the Terminator adapts to fight them. But the show doesn't quite stick the landing with these concepts. Most of the twists are pretty predictable, but it doesn't ruin the fun. You just want to see how it all plays out, even if the payoff isn't as satisfying and the show ends on a sort of cliffhanger. Is it a good show? I'd say it's somewhere between okay and good, but there are definitely some things that don't quite work. The kids were a bit frustrating, especially the younger ones. The cool young cop was a strange character, more important than you think, but not as important as they seem to make him out to be. But I guess you could say the same about Traxler and Vukovic in the original movies. The Terminator is like an AI with perfect aim when dealing with non-main characters. But when it comes to the main characters, it's like an old-school Batman villain, missing every shot. There's a lot to like, but there are also some glaring creative missteps. For example, the idea that a Terminator, with its metal frame covered in living tissue, could hang on to human limbs without severely injuring them doesn't really make sense and wasn't addressed. One thing that threw me off at first, but became more interesting, was Aiko's ruthless nature. She was even meaner than Grace from Dark Fate. She was a real jerk to Misaki, even though she could have made her mission easier by explaining herself better. The idea that Kokoro is a sapient character who actively resists her initial purpose is fascinating. Malcolm spends about three quarters of his screen time in a locked room with an AI voice. He straightforwardly asks her to save humanity, and she demands to know what makes the species worth saving. This back and forth is compelling, but it's also a huge portion of the show. It takes Malcolm out of most of the plot, making it hard to connect with him as a character. He ignores his loved ones so aggressively that the relationships never feel real. When the show finally ends, it's a convoluted mess of big reveals and small reaction. There's definitely potential for a second season, and it's worth hoping the show gets one. It might be more satisfying if the writers and directors get to take the story somewhere more complete. Overall, this series feels like a step towards what most fans have been asking for pure, 
future war stuff, following new characters, and doing lots of world building. If we get a season 2 and it takes place entirely in the future war, it could be the perfect sequel.